What's up guys? Thanks for checking out another holding court video. It's been a minute. Uh, Happy New Year. Hope you guys had a great 2023 and I hope you have an even better 2024. As with any other of my World Junior videos, we have to start off by saying something very nice about the IIHF. IIHF is hemorrhaging credibility with horrible officiating in trying to push a soft version of hockey. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm very conscious when I criticize officiating, especially with hockey, everything's moving so fast, it's very tough. So I give them the benefit of the doubt. However, this tournament had such consistently horrific calls that had major impacts, I've just gotta call it out. I mean, it was terrible. And I'm also calling it out because I understand the reasoning behind this horrendous officiating. The IIHF has sort of tried to reimagine hockey. They, they push this soft version of hockey where if the IIHF had its way, there would be no hitting. Because first they told us, okay, we want to remove the blind side hits, they're dangerous. Well, now guys are getting booted from games for hitting guys from the front. Clean hits. It's crazy to throw guys out of games for body checks, for clean body checks. Give me a break. Stop it. Sometimes it feels like we're only going to have the game of hockey a few more years until it's, you know, figure skating. It's just enough, man. Leave the game alone. Anyways, this list was a huge pain in my ass to make. First of all, you know, as a U.S. guy, the team was an absolute wagon. It just, I mean, a wagon is an understatement. The best U.S. team I've seen in a very long time. So, I could have made a top 10 just from the American team alone. And just as a reminder, this is a top 10 performers from the tournament. This is not who I believe are going to be the top 10 best NHLers. I had to do three honorable mentions, guys, because like I said, uh, there's so many guys I want to talk about, but I'm only keeping the list to 10. But I got three honorable mentions, starting number 13 from Finland. He's a 2006 Consta Hellenius. Hellenius is projected to be a top 10 pick this coming NHL draft. Um... I was constantly noticing him on the attack for Finland. Finland had a lot of high flying forwards and he was always around the puck and he was always making plays and as a 2006, as a younger guy in this tournament, he did not shy away from anything. He wasn't staying on the perimeter. He was constantly involved and I really liked uh, his deception with the puck, which is a great skill to have for an offensive guy and he was making plays pretty consistently. So um, I really liked Consta Hellenius. I think that's going to be a great pick for whoever gets him. Speaking of this coming draft, we have the guy who's supposed to go number one overall, probably will, Macklin Celebrini. Canadians, I'm sorry guys, this is your only Canadian on this whole list. I just couldn't justify putting any of the Canadian guys in the top 10 of this list when their team performed so poorly. So Macklin Celebrini, uh, Canadian kid playing NCAA hockey, projected to go number one overall this coming draft, torched the USHL last season, very impressive, and is now torching the NCAA. Just the fact that this kid's so young, he's a 2006, he put up eight points in five games in this tournament. He was well over a point per game player, showed his great vision, and you know, he's an offensive producer. So very impressive considering his age and uh, his production this tournament. I had to put him on here. He's going to be a great player, no doubt. Number 11, it once again, I want to kick my own ass for having this guy at 11, not even in my top 10. It feels dirty because he was brilliant. Just goes to show you the quality of performances in this tournament. From the American team and tied for the lead in World Junior Goals this year, Isaac Howard. Like I said, led the tourney in goals with seven. He also led in plus minus. The guy just absolutely showed game-breaking offensive ability. He had two big goals in the gold medal game against Sweden. It just felt like he was a threat every shift. Also, the funny thing about Isaac Howard, he is predominantly a passer in NCAA with Michigan State. In this tournament, just an absolute shooter leading the tournament in goals. One takeaway from that is... The guy is multi-dimensional. He's not just a passer, not just a shooter. 
a well-rounded offensive player. Moving on to our official list here, number 10, another American boy, we got the goalie, Trey Augustine. In my mind, he was the best goalie of the tournament, which there's your hint, there's no more goalies on this list, sorry. He outplayed a very good Swedish goaltender, Hugo Havilid, in the gold medal game. It couldn't have been easy with that, that Swedish attack, and uh, he shut them down pretty well, and the U.S. ended up taking away the gold. So uh, I really liked Augustine in this tournament. I thought he was very solid and showed a lot of promise. Number nine. This guy, I don't know whether he's more skill or more heart. Lane Hudson, smaller defender. He was zipping around out there. He showed elite mobility, elite offensive ability, showing his smarts by pinching at the right times and not putting his team at a disadvantage with bad pinches or anything like that. And honestly, even if this guy does make bad pinches, he's so quick, he's probably gonna be able to recover from those. By no means just an offensive guy. He made some very good defensive plays too. At the end of the gold medal game against Sweden, he found himself in a little uh, a little scuffle with six foot four Swede uh, Johansson, and he did not back down. He went right at him. Did not back down. And this is a guy who's tremendously skilled, and you know he showed some guts and he showed some heart. Stylistically, I want to be careful here. Stylistically. He reminded me a lot of Quinn Hughes. Smaller defender who's just super fast, uh, super good with the puck. Number eight, Buffalo Sabres. Be excited about this guy, Yuri Kulik. It felt to me like the Czech team went as Yuri Kulik went. And the Czech team had the second best offense in this tournament. If the team really went as Yuri Kulik went, you know, they, they went far. They did well. Uh, Kulik also led the tournament in points with 12 and 7 games. Even more impressive on a Czech team, which, you know, the Czechs are great, don't get me wrong. They're not a US, they're not a Canada, not even a Finland or a Sweden. Kind of like that second tier, maybe, and uh, led the tournament in points. So very impressive for Yuri Kulik. Number seven, another American boy, shocker, Cutter Gauthier, fifth overall pick by Philly. A lot like Yuri Kulik, it felt to me like Cutter Gauthier was kind of the engine driving the U.S. team, constantly involved. Not only production-wise, because he led the tournament in points, he was tied with Kulik, um, but physically, defensively, I mean, full 200-foot game. He was impressing in all areas of the ice, not just offensively. Just look like an elite competitor. Number six, Sharks fans, hang in there. I have your light at the end of the tunnel. His name is Will Smith. Honestly, I should have put Smith higher just for what the NHL did to him at the draft. I mean, that was a disgrace. That was ridiculous. I mean, you're going to make this kid who was just drafted sing the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air song because his name is Will Smith. Can you sing it for us? Right now on camera? Why not? CSPN, yeah. let's go. <laughs> In West Philadelphia, born and raised, where the playground is where I spent most of my days, chilling out, relaxing, relaxing, all cool, chewing some b-ball outside of school. That's incredible. It might be more impressive than your playing school, but I know you aren't impressive. Unbelievable. Anyways, hockey media, right? Wow. Little context here on Will Smith. So Will Smith holds the number two spot in single season points for the national team development program, above guys like Jack Hughes, Austin Matthews. You know, mediocre guys like that. Will Smith was a constant offensive threat. Uh, to me, honestly, this guy might be the most gifted offensive player on the whole U.S. team. It's just an incredible player. With When the puck's on his stick, something's probably going to happen. Number five, a guy who's going to be a big piece of the Iser plan in Detroit. Axel Sandin Pelica incredibly fluid skating defenseman. There were no better skating defensemen in this tournament. This guy's skating mechanics are so sick. You could tie me down and, and hold my eyes open like Clockwork Orange and make me just watch this guy skate laps at public session and I wouldn't even be upset. Just an absolutely incredible skater. This guy had an outstanding first pass. He was outstanding quarterbacking the power play for Sweden. Number four, San Diego, California, stand up for our boy, Zeev Buyum. Now, Buyum was projected to go around the 2025 spot in this coming NHL draft. Uh, not anymore. He had an incredible tournament. His offensive reads and his offensive play in general 
was so outstanding. It had me put him at number four, despite there being a couple things in his game I didn't love. He had a couple little gaffes in the D zone. Even despite that, the guy ends up at four on my list, not just because he's a Cali boy, but he's just absolutely elite skill. I think there's no way he goes past pick 20 in, in this coming draft. And he absolutely shouldn't. So I'm not saying he's bad defensively. I think he could get a little bit stronger there, but honestly, even if he didn't, he's still gonna be an elite prospect. Number three, Gabe Perot. Perot was absolutely lethal with Will Smith on the US attack, which shouldn't surprise anyone because they were absolutely lethal together with the National Team Development Program. As I mentioned earlier, Will Smith number two, single season points. Gabe Perot, number one, all-time single season points record with the National Team Development Program. Over Will Smith, over Austin Matthews, over Jack Hughes. You know, those bums. It felt like, especially in crunch games, it was either Will Smith setting up Gabe Perot or Gabe Perot setting up Will Smith. I swear, these guys are like the Sedin twins who don't look alike and have different parents. But I made the joke that either the Rangers or the Sharks need to get on the phone and they need to swing a trade to put these guys together at the NHL level because they have some telekinetic thing going on. All right, number two, Lenny Haminaho. I just said that 75 times. You guys aren't going to see the edit. I think 75 or 76 times. He's already a top player for his team in the pro leagues in Finland. He was constantly noticeable and always noticeable for good things. Excellent shot and scoring touch. Uh, I really liked his poise with the puck and his decision making. I absolutely loved watching Finland play, particularly the forwards, because there were some high-flying guys on that offense, and none stuck out to me more than Haminaho. And our number one top performer of the 2024 World Junior Championships, the 2022 15th overall selection of the Vancouver Canucks, Jonathan Lekramaki. Lekramaki was tied with Isaac Howard for the tournament lead in goals, and he had the tournament best five power play goals. Very Stamkosy on the power play. He had an absolute cannon from the half wall, and he uh, victimized teams five times with it. Not only scoring like a madman, but he was throwing the body around and playing physical. He had that very well-rounded element to him, which not a lot of guys have anymore. So, yeah, once again, Sweden had some very dangerous forwards. None more dangerous to me, and actually in the whole entire tournament, than Jonathan Lekermaki. So, that's my top 10, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.